clock will start. Pounding down as soon as the puck is dropped in. 19 seconds and a quick chance. And would you believe it? It's 5 all with 17.4 seconds left on the clock. Sensation here at the Odyssey. Another Canadian on the vocals there, Brian Adams. Denise Watson is at the Odyssey right now, soaking up the atmosphere and standing by with another special female guest. Talk about atmosphere, Jerome. It is electric here. I have managed to get my hands on the giant sports therapist. This is Alexandra von Hasselberg. Alex, how are they feeling at the minute? Uh, pretty intense. I think the atmosphere in the dressing room, it's hard to gauge. Um, pretty much like any other game, but obviously in the back of their minds, they're uh, really getting focused, really driving towards obviously a possibility of two out of three trophies for the season. And what about uh, physical injuries? Now Jason Ruff, I understand, is only just back. How's he reading? Great, great. I mean, if anybody saw the game yesterday, Jason just came back, slotted right back in. Some great assists and some fantastic play. So he just he bounced back like there was never a problem to start with. Now last night it was a little bit subdued, wasn't it? The 6-3 win, but they were all quite quiet. Okay, yeah, um, I think this has been, well, this tonight is very important for them, and I think it is difficult. The scheduling hasn't been as good as it could have been, especially playing last night and then playing again today at 2.30. It's a physical game, and you need a little bit more time to recover, but they seem very well up for it tonight. Now, it's been a fantastic day for you as well. You have been selected for the Great Britain women's team. <laughs> Alex, that's fantastic. Yeah, I was quite, um, quite pleased. I only made the squad last year and to be selected to play you know, against teams like Italy and Belgium to represent Great Britain is fantastic. I'm looking forward to it. The only downside is that I'm going to miss two of the playoff games here at the Odyssey next weekend. But it's an opportunity I can't turn down, so Dave Whistle's been very supportive. In fact, the whole team's been very supportive, so I look forward to going and seeing if I can do OK. OK, that's fantastic. Alex, we wish you well. Back to the studio with Jerome. We're all set. Certainly are. Denise is up for it and so is Alex. Well done to her. Keep your emails coming, by the way. We've had some terrific uh, reactions so far and not just from here in Northern Ireland. Stuart Cunningham in West Kilbride. Fiona McGarva in Ayr. Alison Stokes in Ayr as well. Donna Wilkes in Yorkshire. Penny Mary in Sheffield. All of those watching on our BBC2 digital channel. That's across the UK. Good afternoon to all of you as well. There's also a few from home like Joe McCourt in, in Bestbrook and uh, some other people from here as well. And also Stephen from Armagh, who uh, is a bit of a cheeky chappy. He wants to know if Geraldine Heaney is doing any autograph sessions before she goes back to Canada. The next thing you'll want her phone number as well. Well, we'll actually get her to sign the shirt, so you're in the competition, so maybe you'll win that. And uh, we'll try and find out if she's going to Lurgan or anywhere near then before she goes back. Keep those emails coming for the quiz and for your views on the ice hockey. The address is on the screen right now, ice.hockey at bbc.co.uk. The quiz question, if you missed it, is what number does Geraldine Heaney, Lurgan's gold medalist at the Winter Olympics, wear on her shirt? The prize is a giant shirt, signed, as I say, by Geraldine, with her name and number on it. And no, the answer is not 81. That's one of the incorrect ones so far, but most of you are getting it right. Anyway, you've seen the giant success story, but it wouldn't be possible without the fans. They've taken to ice hockey in their thousands, packing the Odyssey week in, week out. And they come from all sorts of backgrounds, proving the Giants' catchphrase to be correct. In the land of the Giants, everyone is equal. We spoke to some of those fans after last week's three-all draw were there. I play rugby myself, mate, and ice hockey is the best because it just it brings the people together. Great atmosphere. Brilliant. We're all together here. We're all having a good night. We all enjoy the game. It doesn't matter what anybody is. This is 
baby support hockey, people from Belfast, people from Scotland getting on with the sport. It's great in the far after the game, having a drink, and that's it. It's a, it's a good atmosphere, it's great to bring the kids along too, it's, uh, it's a good event really. I've got a little message for Jeff Hope. Jeff, if you're listening to me son, do what you can this season, because I want you to win. It was a draw, we're all happy, Jeff. We'll Only play it draw. next week and see who wins. But it'll not be a draw at the final, will it? No, it won't be, no. Oh, yeah. Who said ice hockey wouldn't catch on? It certainly is, and I've just had an email from Patrick Stewart. He's aged six. And he says he wants to be a Belfast giant when he grows up. Well, uh, if you're about to watch ice hockey for the very first time, you might appreciate a breakdown of the rules. We enlisted the help of a few of the giants here. Sean Barons, he's the only American on the team. The rest are all Canadians. And Taran, the terror sandwich, he's the big fella. The first penalty we're going to show is called slashing. That's when you take your stick and you hit somebody with it and you get two minutes and you go to the box. Here we go. Okay. Next one is hooking, and that's when you uh, impede a player or slow them down by using your uh, stick. The next is tripping, which is basically the same thing, but the player falls down, that's a tripping penalty. Alright, the next one is elbowing, and that's when you take your elbow and you hit the person uh, around the head area or upper body area. That's how you get two minutes for elbowing. You're obviously not allowed to do this, especially as you run the risk of upsetting your opponent. And if you persist with such foul tactics, you might just make him mad enough to drop the gloves. If this happens, the officials and the rest of the players don't get involved, unless it's an unfair fight, which this isn't. The little American, much too strong for the big six foot four Canadian. There's a couple of major rules, like offside, which is where the attacking player crosses the blue line before the puck. He's offside. And then there's the icing rule, which is where the puck is played over the center broken red line ahead of your teammates. If the defending team gets to it first, it's called icing the puck, and the game is restarted with a face-off. Well, that's the rules, or lack of them on some occasions there. Now we can go and talk to Dave Whistle, coach of the Belfast Giants. Coach Whistle is with Denise Watson. Thanks very much, Jerome. Coach Whistle, uh, how do you feel at this moment, minutes to face off? Well, I'm pretty excited as all the guys are in our room right now. I mean, we can't wait to get this game on the road. It's been a few weeks now, so I think everybody's pretty pumped up. So everybody's pretty happy we'll get out there as neat as possible. What about the favorite tag? <laughs> well, I'd rather have that. I mean, uh, we've had a very successful campaign this year. We don't want it to stop today. We want another trophy this year. This will be the first time our crowd's been able to cheer for a trophy for us in front of them. So, I mean, they, they really deserve it. They've been a great backbone to our team all year long. And uh, without them, we wouldn't be here probably. So, I mean, we're pretty pumped to be playing right in front of our home crowd today. Your opponents really have everything to prove today. You have beat them seven times this season, and they also lost in the final last year of this competition. Yeah, I mean, that, that's here nor there. That's all out the window. It's a one-game shot. They, they have a very good team there. They're in second place in the league for a reason. And uh, tonight, it's, it's going to who gets the lucky breaks, I think. I think both teams are going to come out working hard. I don't think anybody's going to want to take any silly penalties. And I think we're going to both require our goalies to play very well. So I think it could be a tight game. And uh, hopefully by the end of it, though, we come out on top. How important is it to have the and drop back for this? Uh, it's key. I mean, I think, uh, like I've said before, I think he's the best all-around player in the league. He allows Kevin Real and Sean Barris to have so much offense because he's such a gift and skill player himself. So, I mean, he's a huge addition, and I'm glad to have him back. We used him last night and uh, just to get his kind of win back, and then today he's going to be flying. Now, Air are suggesting they're going to play a low-risk game. That means perhaps not many goals. Yeah, they have an excellent goal center to fall back on, so you, you need a lot of scoring chances to generally score. So, I mean, I know how they're going to play. They're going to be aggressive right off the bat. I mean, uh, they're going to dump it in. I saw their starting lineup. They're going to get it in deep. Our fours, we already know what we got to do. We got to hold them up a bit. We got to get it out and let our skilled fast forwards take over. Okay, Jim, I'll let you go. Do a bit of YMCA before yeah. you go. <laughs> no, I'm not very good okay. dancing. Okay, all the best. Back to the studio. Nice try, Denise. Now, that would have been something. Uh, what about the players now? Uh, who would have thought a couple of years ago that boys and girls across Northern Ireland would have heroes called Rocket Rod Stevens and the nuclear warhead Paxton Schulte, he's the tough guy by the way, who drops the gloves when anyone messes with any of the Giants. The squad is 17 strong, 16 Canadians and one American. 
Hi, I'm Jeff Hope, captain of the Belfast Giants. Let me introduce you to our team. Hi, I'm Mark Havlin, goaltender with the Belfast Giants. Uh, I come from Mississauga, Ontario. Hi, I'm Mike Bales. I'm the other goaltender with the Belfast Giants, and I'm the funny mean guy. Now on to the men in black. We're the defense. My name's Todd Kelman. I wear number 44 for the Giants. I'm Chad Allen, the Belfast Giants, and I'm from Davidson, Saskatchewan. I'm Rob Stewart. Uh, I'm the oldest guy on the team. I wear number 16. I'm a defenseman. Hi, I'm Shane Johnson. I play for the Belfast Giants. I wear number four, and I'm from Brandon, Manitoba, Canada. I'm Teran Sanowitz. Uh, I'm number two. I'm a defenseman from Edmonton, Canada. I need a haircut really bad. Hi, I'm Jason Bowen. I play left wing and defense. I'm number 28 I'm from Vancouver Island. Hi, I'm Kurt Bowen, and I play left wing, and I got the best hockey smile on the team. Hi, I'm Paxton Schulte for the Belfast Giants. I wear number 27, and I hurt people. Hi, I'm Kevin Real. I play center. I'm from Medicine Hat, Alberta, Canada. Hi, I'm Jason Ruff. I wear number 17. I play left wing. I'm the back center. My name's Sean Behrens. I wear number 18. I'm a right wing. I'm the only American on the team, and I love to score goals. Hi, I'm Rod Stevens, number 24. I'm a forward, and I come from Fort St. John, British Columbia. Hi, I'm Colin Ward. I wear number 11. I'm from Leduc, Alberta, Canada, and I hope you enjoy watching the game tonight as much as I enjoy playing it. Now that you've met the team, I'd like to introduce the man behind it all. Hi, my name is David Whistle, and I'm the coach and general manager of the Belfast Giants. I know it's going to be a good game for everybody today, so sit back and enjoy yourself. We'll do that, Dave. We'll try and enjoy the match, hopefully with the Giants winning. They say completely biased. I have a few guests from the Nottingham Panthers. They know what it's like to lose at the Odyssey. In fact, you both were on the losing team last night, PC Drew and Ashley Tate. Getting very close to the start now. You heard Dave Whistle there, interestingly, talking about tactics. I hope the, the air guys aren't coming to sort of um, put up shop and try and go for a nil-nil or <laughs> something here, are they? Well, um, I wouldn't be too, uh, too stupid of them to try to do that because... I mean, Belfast has got so, many, so much talent up front. Um, they're fast, they're skilled, um, and they're, they're hard to stop. So they're going to have to play a very strong defensive game. So too. is it just that um, the Giants have a really good bunch of players together they on, on paper should win? Uh, I, I hate to say it, but I, I think so. Um, they have um, three of the top four scores in the league. Um, and they're, they're just very skilled, very fast, very, uh, very offensive. And actually, they have a good group of players there, and a few characters we've seen there. <laughs> Sean Barron's mucking about with the rules and so on. He's a small enough guy, but uh, a cracking player. And you have Paxton, who says he likes to hurt people. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. He, uh, you know, they've got the, the Real Barron's line. They um, and Ruff. They kind of they're the main offensive threat. And like PC said, the three of those guys are in the top four scores in the league. And uh, you know, they come back with two more re really good lines. Um, I mean, there's no, there's no kind of first line there. You know, every line's capable of scoring goals, so it's going to be interesting. How strong are we talking about? Um, and there's the atmosphere building. There's the, the scene at the Odyssey right now, and it looks fantastic. You were there last night. Um, I was just going to say to you, why don't we look at these pictures and, and, and the crowd there? And they're really into it as well. <laughs> Tickets sold out a long time ago. You know, if we're comparing with the NHL, you know. Um, how far off are we? Somebody actually said about one stage the Giants are, are they're quite good, but they're not big enough. And I'm thinking, blame me. Karan Sand with six foot four. How big do you want here? You know, how good are the Giants uh, compared to the NHL? Or yeah, yeah. Um, they're obviously a, a level down, uh, but in our league, they're the best. So <laughs> that's all you need to know. And actually, how much of this is showbiz? How much of it is manufactured, and how much of it is, is the real thing? Um, well, kind of none of it's none of it's manufactured. You know what you see on the ice is, you know, it's it's a fast game, it's physical, and uh, but off the ice, it's, it's all you know the Mexican oh, definitely, yeah, and all you, that. Yeah. It's all entertainment. It's, yeah. yeah, it is. You know, it's a, it's a new sport. Um, it's you know still relatively new in Britain, and you know I think Belfast have done a great job selling the sport to the people in Northern Ireland. You know, obviously tickets are very hard to come by, and uh, you know maybe a few, you know there's a few other clubs in Britain could maybe take a leaf from their book and. Uh, you know, they'd be selling out week, week in, week yeah, out. They've sold it well and, and fair play to them, PC. It is, uh, it's gone extremely well. OK, we're actually going to go over. No more talk from us. Time for the start of the face-off, should I say. The 2002 Challenge Cup final on commentary. We have Alex Dampier. He's the director of hockey at the Nottingham Panthers and the most successful coach in Britain. He knows what he's talking about. And he's along with a commentator fresh from Salt Lake City. You saw him earlier on. A good afternoon to Simon Cross.
The Odyssey Arena sold out for weeks as the Belfast Giants go for the league and cup double. In their way, Air Scottish Eagles, runners-up in the Super League, determined not to finish second best for this one-off cup final. The winner takes all for the Giants, overwhelming in British ice hockey this season. It's Simon Cross with Alex Dampier, former Great Britain head coach, Nottingham Panthers, director of hockey. Alex, can anything stop Belfast? Well, you know, there's no question the Air have their hands full. Uh, Belfast is a very well-balanced team. They've got good goaltending, solid defense, very offensive defenseman. And up front, they've got some muscle, speed. So all around balance, I think, you know, Air have got to hold it tight to start with. Uh, they can get uh, Belfast off their stride. You know, they may stand in there with a chance. Of their eight meetings this season, Giants have won seven. One tie, Air have not beaten Belfast Giants this season. We should say that uh, that record's got to go sooner or later. Well, you know, it's a one-off game. Anything happens in a one-off game, Simon. I don't think you can uh, rely on statistics. It's like going into playoffs. It's a new league. Tonight's a one-off thing, and uh, I think Belfast will... They better pay attention. Air's got some sting in them. Of course, it's a great crowd in. Plenty over from Scotland to cheer on the Air Scottish Eagles. A ton of people in, of course, locally to support their team. This game being switched from the London Arena to host the Challenge Cup for the second year in a row. Those teams with outstanding talent, and we'll talk about some of those players, Alex. Start us with the goalies, because there's some there's a prospect of a real battle of two great goalies today. Well, Belfast have uh, certainly got good goaltending in both their goalies. But I don't think uh, whatever, whatever happens, uh, Coach Whistle's got some good goalies to go to. Uh, Jack and Gage. He's uh, probably one of the better goalies in the league, without a doubt. I think, you know, if he has a hot game tonight, Air will certainly be in it, but I think Air is probably going to need that goalie to come up big. You played here last night with your club, the Nottingham Panthers. In a, in a narrow game, you were defeated, but uh, tell us what sort of impact this crowd can have on you as a, as a visitor to this arena. Well, you know, when, when, when you're playing in your home rink and the uh, crowd gets behind you, it's always worth a goal. And if, if you get on a roll, they can certainly help you uh, continue that pressure. So this will be a big factor tonight. I think Aaron's got to try to silence this crowd if they can. Well, they have come over in some numbers from Scotland. The Scottish hockey fan, you know very well, Alex, having coached up in Murrayfield. But the Scottish uh, hockey fan travel far and wide to cheer on their side. They'll, they'll uh, make sure they're heard as well, won't they? Well, they're a very passionate team. They've, uh, they've been involved with one of the best clubs in British ice hockey. So they know what it takes. They know they need to get behind their team to, to help uh, Paul Heavey's squad come up with a victory here today. The Belfast Giants have become the Super League champions in their second year of existence as the referees come onto the ice. The Air Scottish Eagles have won this cup before, but they've uh, challenged at times this season for top spot. But it uh, ends up second place in the ISL this year. So you could say we've got the top two teams in the Super League. I'm sure you might not necessarily agree with that, Alex, at the Nottingham Panthers, but uh, these two teams uh, taking the top two spots in the league this, this term. Well, Belfast hit the ground running. They had a pretty solid squad when they started off. Uh, Air certainly had some returnees, and they were solid to start with. They hit a bit of a slump, but they're playing well right now. Um, yeah, I would say right now they're in four teams, and uh, it should be a very entertaining game. The uh, referee and his two linesmen have taken the ice. The uh, crowd very much biased towards the home side. Will that play a factor in the, the way this game is called? Not at all. Simon Kirk is a very good uh, officiator. He, he won't be intimidated whatsoever with the crowd. He, he plays in front, of, in front of crowds like this every week in, week out. You know, Nottingham, Sheffield, Belfast. They're all busy places. He won't have a problem with this. The Air Scottish Eagles won the Challenge Cup in 97-98 season, the season that the Air Scottish Eagles did the Grand Slam. Last year, it was the Sheffield Steelers who won it all. This year, the Belfast Giants are one step of three to a Grand Slam. So an important de day for the Giants, another large step in their very short history. Yeah, they're going to uh, they're going to want to take everything this year. I talked to Dave before the game. You know, he tries to put that point down. They, they're happy with the league, but... You know, every time you get a chance at a trophy, you want to take it. The crowd here are on their feet. They've been on their feet, really, ever since the lights went down some 20 minutes ago. 
just getting ready for this game. There's still some seats to be taken and there's plenty of people out in the concourse ready to uh, take their seats as the teams come onto the ice. The first team on the ice will be the Air Scottish Eagles. They'll be led out by their netminder. The starting goalie is Rocking Gage, 28 years old. A big goalie, six foot two, covers a lot of net. And Rocking Gage will be the key man for this team today. Yeah, he's, he's a little doubt, the guy that makes things happen for them. You put him under a lot of pressure, he makes the big saves, and then they've got a, a good transition game. So, you know, I think uh, Paul Heavey's looking for him to, to be their backstop today. He's going to keep them in it if anybody's going to. Their captain is Alan Schuler, an experienced man in the British game. They've got some outstanding players in their side, and we ought to really make a brief mention now at the early stage of the man emerging now, Ed Courtney, wearing the number 17 for Air Scottish Eagles, and over the last five years in British ice hockey, the outstanding goal scorer. Yeah, Eddie is a very talented player. He's big, strong. He's got a real nose for the net. Uh, he's hard to stop when he's on his game, and you know, if Eddie, if Eddie gets loose, then he'll cause uh, Belfast a lot of problems, but I'm sure that uh, Belfast are going to keep an eye on him. They also have outstanding team toughness. A lot of guys know how to handle themselves on the ice from the Earth team. Yeah, you know, Phil Crow's a big tough guy. Doty Wood's tough fellow. They've got a big, big team. This is, a, this is as big a hockey team as you'll see anywhere. And there's Ed Courtney. Uh, a lot depends on him. He starts to put out of his mid-season scoring slump. And Ed Courtney is a key man as a forward for Air Scottish Eagles. He has to hit the back of the net. Uh, he's, the, a, he's a big game player, though, Simon. He, he knows what it takes to play in a, big, in a big game, and he knows tonight he's got to pull out the stops. Another man who has to do just that is Mike Bales, starting netminder for the Belfast Giants. Yeah, Bales is a very solid goaltender. He's one of the real pros in the league. I would suspect he's probably the, one of the top goalies in the league. We played them last night, he, um, he had an outstanding game, so I would think that, uh, you know, here's another chance for Silverware, he's not going to let them down. He's played 23 games in the best league in the world, the National Hockey League in North America, at the Boston Bruins, and also at Ottawa. He signed from the Utah Grizzlies, who uh, play in Salt Lake City, recently the home of hockey for the last couple of weeks. Mike Bales now making his home of hockey here in Belfast and such an important part of their championship winning season. But there's so many good players in the Giants squad. They operate three very solid lines. I'm looking at uh, the signing of Sean Berrin just after the start of the season as being a particularly key signing for the Belfast Giants. Yeah, he's been a big addition for West. He came into the club and uh, almost immediately made an impact. Um, he works hard. He, he, he knows how to score goals. Uh, I think, you know, Wiss probably got a guy at the right time, and he certainly uh, has had a big impact on the club. And the impact as well, as he's a bit of a singer-songwriter, plays the guitar, does a few gigs around the club in Belfast, a popular character in the city, and he likes playing the Air Scottish Eagles. 15 points from seven matches against Air. Looking at Jason Ruff, recovered from an elbow injury. Important that he was fit for this game. I think uh, Jason Ruff probably one of the best players in the league. He um, he can do it all. He's a great passer, sees the game well. Um, you know, in the in the offensive zone, he's big and strong. He's very very difficult to knock off the puck. I think you know Wiss looks to him a lot. When he was out of the lineup for a while, David really missed him. Jason Ruff will play with Sean Behrens and Kevin Rail as the top line. There's the captain, Jeff Hode. You know, Jeff's been around. There's another guy who scored some big goals over the years. He, uh, he's been on some championship teams, and he's been one of those guys that scored the big championship goals. He's played on four clubs in Great Britain. He's won something with every single one of them. He's completed the set this year with the championship with Belfast. But yeah, he always seems to come up for the big games as well. So we're just moments away from face-off at the Odyssey Arena. We'll have 60 minutes of hockey. We'll have sudden death overtime if we need it, because this must be won today. It's going to be Dave Matsoff, the face-off specialist who lines up for Belfast Giants to take this one against Dodie Wood and we're underway for the final of the Challenge Cup. Paxton Shorte out there. They're starting immediately Belfast with their checking line. Matsoff tries the first shot of the game but it's away by air. Yes, they sent some of the big guns, some of the tougher guys out there for the first shift Belfast. It's away by Bales. He gets his first touch. Curtis Bowen comes away. Looks for support. Backhands it. 
but Paxton Short goes to ground, unable to keep the puck in the zone, and it's cleared by Alan Schuler. Bodie Wood flicks it into the Belfast zone, we'll have a line change. And Jeff Ho, the captain, on the ice for Belfast. On the puck now, looks forward, goes for Colin Ward. Ward can't bring that one to, under control. And I think, so we'll restart with a face-off. You can see Air started off uh, with a big solid lineup, Simon. They were going to try to get very physical, and I think that's the way they have to go. Ed Courtney touches that one back. Courtney again. He's in the corner. Big hit on Courtney. Going to shake him up early. Ed Courtney, a lot depends on him finding the goal. The goal of his moorings, there'll be a whistle on the play, we'll have a stoppage, and the goal will be reset on his moorings. Ed Courtney taking a big hit there, Alex. Well, you know what? They've got to pay, they've got to, pay attention to Eddie, and uh, that's the way to do it. You've got to play him physical, you've got to play him hard, you got to make sure he doesn't get free room in that offensive zone with the puck. Here it is right here. He just leans in. Two big men going at it, and Eddie, Eddie came out second best on that one, but Eddie will be back, I'll show you. There are some big hitters on both sides. Air have got in Dodie Wood, the second most penalized player in the IFL. But there's several members of the Giants team who live up to their names as Giants. Some big guys out there. And here's one of them, Bowen. Two Bowens on the Giants side, not related. Jason Bowen, the big six foot four defenseman wearing number 28. Another chance for a hit in the corners. And Courtney gets his first shot in on Bales. Bales had to be sharp for the first time. That goes down as the first shot on goal in this game. Bales tested there, and it's important to start to give Bales some work to do, Alex. Yeah, you know, Eddie will shoot every chance he gets. He gets that puck in the offensive zone, it's going to the net. Rough into centre ice. Good backhander pass by Behrens. Behrens has got the puck back from rail. Behrens behind the net. He's got great skill. Not the biggest of guys, but Barron's so effective. Couldn't get round the front of the goal to get the shot off there, but Belfast still have possession. Air clear. What a surprise! A bit of a brief goal to start things off, and Air Scottish Eagles take a 1-0 lead. What was going on in the defence there? It seemed to be a terrible mistake by Mike Bales. His teammate Bales behind the net, shoots it out front, straight to Air forward, and straight into the back of the net. You know, he just didn't get back to the net in time, and he expected to clear it higher off the glass. That's one of those things, though, Simon, you know, it's a, it's, it's a bit of a mistake, but that wouldn't happen very often. Wow, what a surprise. And to see Mike Bales make such a shaky start, even well, more so. I think he expected to put it up on the glass. It didn't happen, and they just picked it up. It was a very alert play by air. They just turned it around and put it right back on net. Really been a good thing for the game, if anything. The fear was that Belfast, so dominant this season, would run out to a big first period lead and that the game would not live up to uh, his cup final status as a, as a spectacle. But that uh, goal just might change that and air come forward again. Although you have to feel sorry for Mike. Depends on the play of the Belfast goalie and he makes an early mistake. A little bit of rough stuff in the corners. Well, I'm over there quickly. Air was always going to play it physical. That's the way they're going to have to do it. Doty Wood will be in there every chance he gets. He's not going to take any prisoners if he gets a chance. 
Dodie Wood has 169 minutes of penalty minutes so far this season. He's had to sit out that much of ice hockey just to uh, either sit out those uh, two-minute minors or being thrown out of the game. He's second in the ISL. And the first penalties of the game, not against Wood. We'll go the penalties in just a moment, but we'll have a, another look at the goal. Well, his bell's behind the net. Yeah, he misfired it. He tried to put it up onto the glass. Uh, over to his winger on the wall and the, you know, it was a real quick play. They just put it right back onto the net and he was caught. So we'll have two minutes of four against four. Both teams have lost a man to the penalty box for two minutes. And hockey fans love four and four hockey. It means lots of open ice and chance for goals. Moline lays it off. Jitling's in there. Can't get the stick on the puck. Here's Rob Stewart, growingly experienced in the British game. Defenseman comes forward, wearing number 16. Turns and it's back to Ruff. Ruff winds and shoots, and it's a glove fame by Gage. That was a good play by Stewart. He's very offensive. He jumps into the play all the time. That's a good shot from the point. Considering they're killing a penalty time and they're doing, they're going on the offense here. We got four on four here now. Shane Johnson in for the Giants. Both teams lost a player for two minutes in the little bit of a rumble down in the corner. Nothing serious, but Simon Kirkham imposing himself on the game early. No, I think he has to. I know. I think he knows it will. It could erupt if he's not careful. Dodie Wood with that shot. The blocker save from Bales. Air will test Bales now because they know he would be shaken by that early error. It's Kelman. Another giveaway by Belfast. Silver plant in the zone. Backhanded. A chance. Oh, it's two. Well, what about that? Well, Ed Courtney comes inside, gets a backhanded pass, and this is very much a surprise. The Giants are trading by two goals to nil. Here's with Eddie. Less than five minutes played. Eddie drops his shoulder, goalie goes down, he puts it upstairs. That's an Eddie Courtney. You know, you can't give him that kind of room, he just finds the net. That's a great goal. Ed Courtney led the league in scoring in the first half of the season. He had a bad slump, as did his team in December. But he seems to be coming back into form just at the right time of the season, the sharp end of the season, with the playoffs still to come. And this, of course, the big prestige cup final. And Alex, really, I'm taken aback by the 2-0 scoreline. Well, you know, that's, that's a great thing for uh, for Air, but they know full well that Belfast has got a lot of sting, and they better just be, pre be prepared to work hard here. And if you're coaching Belfast and you've seen your goalie make a mistake and then conceded another goal more or less straight away, what will you be thinking from the bench? Well, I think David's going to give him a while yet. I don't think he, any of the goals were his fault. Uh, you know, I think defensively they've got to tighten up and uh, play their game a bit. They're not, they're not wheeling with the puck the way they normally do. Rob Stewart tries to get things going from the back. So Dave Whistle was some thinking to do. Dave Whistle's on his own there. His assistant coach is Rob Stewart, who's on the ice. Air Scottish Eagles have both their coaches on the bench. Whistle's on his own out there, and that's really sometimes a disadvantage, isn't it, Alex? Well, I think uh, Rob looks after the defence when he comes to the bench. Uh, he keeps tabs on the 6D, and that's probably his job. And David pretty well controls everything else. along the boards, won by air. They're winning those little battles at the moment. Another whistle. Well, you know, this is what air needed. They needed this confidence boost time. They, uh, I th I'm sure they came in here thinking, you know, we haven't done well. The stats are all stacked against us. 
we need something around the bat. And they got two goals, and uh, you know, you couldn't ask for a better start. They've also controlled the pace to an extent, in that the game hasn't really hit top gear, and Belfast haven't really been allowed to put in too many fast dashes up of ice. His sandwich. No, Air got the game plan worked out well, and they're uh, they're sticking to it. So right now, Simon, I think they're um, Air trying to stretch the uh, the Belfast team. They're getting a guy out of the zone as quick as possible, making that long break pass. They know they've got to keep the um, Belfast defense on their toes and out of the zone a little bit. They're trying to take the face off, but Lions and Norcott will allow them. Paxton Schulte wearing them 27, one of the most feared players in the ISL. And this season, especially, hitting the back of the net on a regular basis. Yeah, he's got 20 goals. He's doing really well. The sort of guy you like to have on your side, but you hate to play against. Oh, yeah. He and Dodie Wood are, uh, you know, they both play very well. and They score goals. They're tough. And pressing forward again, looking for the third. And up it was from Phil Crow. Another one of the tougher guys in the team. Is Matsos battling for it, keeps it in the zone, but another giveaway from Belfast and Air come forward. Shot saved by Bales. Good effort by Jonathan Weaver, the Great Britain's national forward, got forward there. Bales made the glove save, and that was a confidence boost for Bales. And there's a bit of pushing and shoving afterwards. Wood, as he pointed out there, yeah, right here. but here comes Jonathan Weaver. Nice release by Weaver, but a good glove save. And yeah, you'll see uh, Woodsy drive the net after he's. Uh He's going hard at the goal every chance he gets. So a face off to the left and Mike Bell's his goal. Bell's beaten twice. In the early stages of this cup final. A yeah, bit of a wraparound sort of almost behind his back there. An effort from Sean Byram. But Bell's is wide to that one. Well, it's a pretty much of a set play. He's now beside the net. But well, they've got guys going to the net hard. You know, Sean's a big kid. He's digging away. Huh? Now the other two guys drive hard to the goaltender. Look at the puck's loose. Bales has to do a good job cleaning up. So again, a face-off to the left of Bales. Face-offs are so important here, Simon. You know, each team has a set play. You keep... Uh, you gotta keep an eye on your man at all times or you get a quick quick break off the face off and you're in trouble. Big clearance up the ice. By Belfast, but here's Rick Gordon for air. Into center ice. Byron gets a second chance to get it, takes it. Belfast looking shaky in the early stages. Well I think right now air's going after the defense. I think they probably feel that Belfast defense is their weakest area and they're gonna they're gonna work hard on them. The shot wasn't there for Gordon, so here comes Sean Behrens. Behrens to rail, rail. Oh, off the post. Well, the best move up ice, and at last we saw that big dash up ice, didn't we? And there's going to be a penalty as well when we stop the play. Well, this is a great play going down the wing. Shot off the crossbar. You know, that's, that's, that's air, or uh, Belfast to the T. They're a great transition team. Well, Behrens made the pass to Rail. As you see, just yeah. back off the post. Yeah, that's a good, good point. But that's that's where they're dangerous. I mean, you just can't give them the room. You give them half a chance, and they'll break away on you. Now they trail by two goals to nil. And after the play there, Rob Stewart was cautioned for slashing. So the inspirational leader of the defensive unit, Rob Stewart, is out for two minutes. It's five on four. Player advantage for the Air Scottish Eagles. Working it around, looking for the shot. The Belfast are very aggressive, Simon, on their uh, on their, well, on their penalty killing. And Silver Platt. Dodie Wood backhands it into the corner. It's Courtney. Quick release saved by Bales. Silverfax keeps it in the zone. 
Courtney. Just passed back to Wood, though, intercepted. And Jeff Hode. Good man to have out there on the penalty kill. Yeah, the Belfast penalty killing is very good. They, uh, the air gets set up. They're very difficult to break down. They've got big, strong guys. Once they get in there, they always get a decent chance. Brett Gordon and Shula into the boards. Hit from Curtis Bowen. There's Rhett Gordon still winds, gets a shot, Bell grabs it, he'll take a face off. The Belfast penalty killing the second most effective in the league. Yeah, they're very aggressive. They don't give you time to set up. But uh, in saying that, Air, like you see right here, oh, here's, here's Byron going to the net. But Air, Air set up and they're, they're big, they're strong, they've got some good shooters. So, another face-off, as I said, so important to win these, keep it down there. Belfast will just look to, to win the face-off and clear from the zone. He's got some seconds on this power play. We've got another 47 seconds until Rob Stewart can return to the ice and the team can return to five players. It's a good job there by Belfast, clearing the puck. Right now, penalty. They really need to kill this down. 3 nothing would be a tough score to... Uh, they'll come back, but it'd be very difficult. Weaver to Gordon. Oh, they failed to clear it. Belfast have had these chances to clear the puck, and they haven't always taken them, Alex. No, you know, they're under pressure a lot, though. Uh, Air, Air have got a good setup on their power play, and uh, they've always got two guys in the puck. They work well. This is a very strong part of their game. Rizador in front of the net, taking a hammering as well. Shula, he makes a shot, and Rob Stewart is back on the ice, and Belfast return to full strength. It's five on five once again. The penalty has been killed by Belfast. That will give him a boost. It's so important they didn't concede another goal on that two-minute man advantage. And here's Jason Ruff in the corner. Ruff to Berens. Berens. Good work. Out in front. Going to be away by Air and Ed Courtney helping out defensively. Many people say that final element of the game that even exists. And a big check on the board so that gets the crowd up. Again, it was Jason Bowen going in hard on his opponent. The crowd loved Bowen here. Second year as a giant. Some heavy hits going out in this game. Yeah, that's a big, you know, that's, that's pretty close to being dangerous, you know, that's... But the, uh, Mullen wasn't afraid, he went in first, big man behind him took the hit. Simon Kirkham letting that go. Nine minutes remaining for Paul Heavey to watch his side hopefully for him go off to a two nothing lead he'll be very happy with the way things are going yeah if he can come out of here with that he'd be very happy i think it's far more what he expected odin byron with that face off rob stewart with a shot oh a double save by gage stewart away to stevens the air had the puck with balba Stoppage in the play. Here's a good shot right here. That's the one thing about uh, Belfast. They've got a great setup right here. They get to the net. Good shot right off the draw. Eric gonna have to do a better job of winning that draw. It's gonna cost him a goal. Goaltender comes up with a big save. It certainly hasn't been the first period we expected. Then I pack away from the ball. Wood does get a shot in. And Stewart is mad at himself for deflecting that one into a fail. Bales makes a save. Been by far the busier of the two goalies. 
Well, they're just going to shoot on sight right now. They're getting it inside the zone. They're going to put it to the net. And they're just going to drive hard, hope for rebounds. Eagles, of course, happy with a 2-0 lead, but also happy with the way things are going because they're keeping the puck down around Bells' goal. A lot more than Belfast would like. It's away. Stevens has a chase on here, but still the fact Hillstrom will get that one away. Backhands it. Silver Platts to Wood. Wood booms one in, but it's way over the glass, uh, and that's a souvenir for the crowd. First of all, can the two competitors chosen for the Indiana Jones competition please make their way to Standing room only here for this sold-out cup final. Wood's the big player for the air team. He's, uh, he's a key guy. He scores some goals, tough, always involved in the play. 106 games in the NHL for San Jose Sharks. Dave Whistle has a game on his hands. I think Whistle always expected that, but I don't think he expected to be down two goals. The players love playing for Dave Whistle. One of the two major factors in the success of the Belfast Giants. Players love playing for the guy. They want to come here and play. And they love playing in front of this crowd as well. Ed Courtney gets a little tip away for Eagles. There's Moline. Great skills, great skating ability, the Swede. Come, came into the Eagles side just on transfer deadline day. He's out there with... Ed Courtney, and a, a new line which is only some 10 games old. Yeah, that's been a good combination. Uh, Moline has uh, gone in there with Courtney, and they're doing well together. Courtney was playing with Wood, and they've changed it up a bit, and uh, you know that little guy, uh, Moline, is doing a great job with Eddie. Yeah, Ed Courtney uh, started the season playing with Wood, and they, they seem to score so many goals, and it dried up, and credit to the... Uh, Air staff for trying something different. Well, you got to do that now again, freshen things up, and it certainly worked for Air. Moline, Jickling, and Courtney, that forward line. <laughs> Bales flicks it away, but it's to Air. And Weaver for the Eagles. Backhands it. To Sean Byram, number 16. The Eagles still have it. Belfast just want to get the puck out of the zone. And here's Sean Behrens, the man who can probably do that. What good skills this man's got. Good work by Behrens. Up to rail, the two highest scorers in the Super League this season. Out there with Jason Ruff on the forward line, but Air get it back and Hellman picks it up behind his own goal. Well, I think Air are looking to capitalize on uh, on the defense in, in the Giants' end. Air's a big club. I think they feel they can manhandle the uh, Giants' defense and probably get a cycle going, and that's the way they look like they're trying to play. Todd Hellman, three years at the Bracknell Bees, one of the many former Bracknell players now playing in the Belfast lineup. Here's another one, Rob Stewart gets a shot in. Good save by Gage. Gage has looked solid. Again, another set play off the draw, Simon, that uh, they're going to have to pay attention to. Into the middle, Moline tried to get the touch in. Both on the Giants offside. Look close. Stevens bring the puck into the zone. Well, they have done what I think they wanted to do, try to keep the crowd out of the game. They've got them quiet right now, but, you know, the Giants get one goal, and this place will erupt, and it's all new game. It's a very noisy place when Giants are winning. But you hear coaches say that, Alex. You, you hear the, uh, the coaches of the other ISL teams saying that it's important to get a lead in this building because it can, as you, as you say, I've heard that phrase so many times, it takes the crowd out of it. Yeah, any of these buildings that have got this kind of atmosphere is real important. Otherwise, one goal leads to two, and next thing you know, you're on your heel and you can't keep up. Stevens tries to get forward, but the puck is... Flipped over the glass. We'll have a face-off. Again, Simon, the uh, Giants have been doing such a good job on face-offs. Air's going to have to do something right now, or they're going to find themselves losing a goal off the draw here. It's Rocket Rob Stevens, 18 goals so far this season. And again, they'll look to win this face-off, get the puck back to Rob Stewart to shoot one in. Linesman being fussy. Drop the puck. Here we go. 
That's one by Air. We'll look up at the clock and see there's five minutes remaining in the first period. And they'll also look at the scoreline and be very satisfied with their first 15 minutes of work. Another long pass up the ice, touched by a Belfast player, so we'll have icing. The puck returns to the other end for a face-off. Well, Air just didn't get their uh, their breakout right, so instead of messing around, they just iced it, make a couple line changes, and uh, get it right. There's no point in making a mistake in your own end of the rink if you don't have to. Matt Soff takes the face-off. Good face-off specialist. He's out there on the third line with short play to his left-hand side. Matsoff gets it out to the board. Puck was loose for a moment in front of the net, but there's no one there in a black shirt. The Giants modelling this new uniform. Cam Bristow. Matsoff picks it up. Taran Sandwich, Shane Johnson. Sandwich and Johnson defensive unit. You won't get many goals out of those two, but you'll get good, solid defense with Sandwich. Here's one for Shorte to chase. Shorte. Oh, he seemed to win the battle, but he didn't get the control of the puck. Bristow shoots it down the ice. There'll be a line change. How he gets the touch is this? Air just content right now to just clear the zone. They've hit a little bit of a lull. I think Coach Heavey's going to have to, uh, you know, with 3.52 left in the period, they've got to pick it up. They hate to lose a goal here right now, but uh, there's no doubt that the Giants are taking the game to them right now. A lot of stopping and starting, a lot of face off, particularly in that air end. Air forward with Weaver. Weaver's backhand didn't work. Rail gets it away. Silver Platts. Bells leaves that one for Bowen. Jason Bowen. His pass is cut out. And look for Weaver. Got a breakout from Ruff. Ruff gets the puck from Berens. He's got Berens now in support. Shoots it behind the net for Rail. In front for Berens, just behind the man. And Weaver tries to clear. Kelman shoots it in. He's better from Belfast. But the man has taken off the puck. Rhett Gordon is on his own. He'll just shoot it into the corners and return to the bench. 2.45 remaining in this first period. The crowd like the sight of Ed Courtney taking a tumble. Again, Air just content to uh, flip the puck up onto the glass, get it out, kill any kind of momentum that the Giants have right now. They just got to get rid of this, or get through this two minutes and 30 seconds and uh, get into the dressing room and I'm ready for the second period. As long as they come out of here 2 nothing, he will be pretty happy with it. Ed Courtney with a vital second goal. So well taken by one of the best goal poachers in the game. We have awfully fussy linesmen today, Alex. I wish sometimes I'd just get on and drop the puck. Well, face-offs are so important, you don't want to give up an advantage. Bales has to make a stop, and Jeff Hode with that puck. The Giants captain stuck on the board. The whistle, and the referee is decided that puck is not going to come out of there in a hurry, so we'll have another face-off. Jeff Hode, a winner wherever he's been. He's won this cup before with the Eagles. He's won the Benson and Hedges Cup with Nottingham and the playoffs with London Knights. And now a champion with the Giants. So 
Silver Fats. Two minutes remaining in the first period. A first period which has caused some eyebrows to be raised here at the Odyssey Arena. Shane Johnson. Back to Schulte. Back to Sandwith, but the pass was misdirected. Bristol had a chance to get away with it there. And the referee Kirkham has seen something, Wood and Schulte having a bit of a bust up there in front of the benches. It never really went off, but enough for referee Kirkham to get involved. You know, Gordy Woods took a silly penalty there, he didn't really have to, and Schulte took it. You know, now they're going to get a power play out of it. But Doty, you know, he's a, he's a hard, aggressive player. Paxton just took it, and uh, now they get the power play. So they'll close out this period with the one-man advantage. Short they did well there, didn't he? Showed a lot of self-restraint to uh, not really fight back. You know, I think uh, uh, Schulte is probably one of the highest uh, power play goal scorers in the league. He's got 10 goals. Rough and Byron. Byron wins it with a skate. Rob Stewart. Curtis Bowen. Back to Stewart. A minute and a half remaining on this power play. So this period will be seen out with the one-man advantage of Stewart. Stewart across. Shot. Gage makes the save. Well, there's Gage. You know, that's why he's one of the best goalies in the league. He comes back to the point. Quick shot. He catches it. Kills it. You know, it saves uh, Air to get a face off. Air been doing well in the draws. There's a good chance here they can kill this clock. Thirty seconds remaining in the first session. Chance Chad Allen with that shot. Just bobbled up in front of the net of Gage. Allen again. But for the pass this time, Allen can't keep it in his own, so it's cleared by air. Belfast Giants have to come out of that zone before trying to intercept the puck again. So five seconds remaining, the clock ticks down at the end of the first period. Alex Dampier, were you expecting a 2-0 first session? No, you know, you, you come into a game like this, you don't know what to expect, but... I don't know if Belfast is a little bit overconfident. They've had such a good record against Belfast, but, you know, uh, Heavey goes back into the dressing room. has got to be real pleased, but they got to put that period behind them and uh, just come out and try to win the second period. Yeah, Scottish Eagles fans, that little trip across from Scotland, well worth it so far for them. Let's go ringside and join Janice Watson, who's not there right now but she will be shortly grabbing one of the players or competitors soon to hear their thoughts on the first period the first period which sees the Air Scottish Eagles taking a two nothing lead the first on a big mistake by Mike Bales I, I still I know you were giving him a perhaps an excuse he said he was trying to clear the puck uh, up high and it, it went it stayed low but really you don't expect that from your premier netminder well you know that happens some of the players shoot the puck badly and the goalie has a harder time shooting the puck he had a, he had a forward out on the wall that he was trying to get to and he just mishandled it, and uh, you know that happens. And he just didn't get back to the front of the net. But uh, the second goal, of course, that was that was a tough one. You know, he didn't have a chance. So you get over Eddie Courtney one on one from that kind of range, and uh, it'll be really very difficult. So a two nothing scoreline after 20 minutes. We are graced by a gold medalist here at the Odyssey today. Geraldine Heaney from Team Canada, the women's Olympic team, is down ringside with Denise. 
thanks very much. Yes, Geraldine is with me. You've been watching that. Quite a shock result. 2-0 goal. Yeah, it's been an exciting game. Unfortunately, the first goal, the goalie made a bad play, but there's still lots of time left in the game, and hopefully the Giants can come back. You see the Giants, the Britons, the occasion, but there's a, a lot of nerves there, Geraldine. I think so. Like you said, uh, you know, they're the favourite team, and the other team's just coming in here, and, you know, they have nothing to lose, so they can go out and give it as we're all. And, you know, the pressure might be on the Giants, but they just have to go out there and play their game because they've been on top all year, and they've got to keep it up. The same happened to you girls out at the Olympics. You hadn't beaten the Americans, and then you went out and beat them when it mattered. That's right. I mean, you know, it comes down to one game, and that's the game that mattered. And that's just like tonight, I guess. Those seven games that the Giants have played earlier against this team doesn't count right now. And this is the game that counts, and they got to go out and just pull it together. What do you reckon Coach Whistle will be saying to the guys in the dressing room? There's a lot of really long faces walking through the tunnel. I think they just got to go out there and play with confidence. They've been winning all year because of certain reasons. And they just got to play the game and, you know, not be worried too much and not be so tense and just go out and have fun. And they played the game for so long and they're great at it and just go out and put the ball in. Okay, I'll just move across here because uh, you're also with your father today. And it's lovely to have Geraldine back here, isn't it, Michael? It's, I can't get over the support we got at the airport when we come in. Uh, something I'll never forget from family and friends. How did you feel watching her perform out there at Salt Lake City? I don't know how the nerves went with her, but we were on nerves, I can tell you that. But she's always seen so cool on the ice. I don't know how they do it. It affects us more watching than them playing. <laughs> what is it? What's your impression of the game here today? I really impressed with the atmosphere here. If these guys can't get up with this crowd behind them, they won't get up for anything. Do you think they'll be able to get back into the game? I think so, because this crowd will bring anybody on. I'm surprised at the noise around here. But the noise really helps. It really yes, helps. they let you know you're behind them, you know. Okay, well, Michael, enjoy the rest of the game. Geraldine, I'll talk to you later. Back to the studio for now. Thanks, Denise. You're watching the Challenge Cup final live on BBC Grandstand from Northern Ireland. Not going well, is it? <laughs> well, for the Giants, anyway. It's, it's, but uh, all credit to, to, to Air. I mean, as we said, they drew three all here last week, and it's a one-off. It's a cup final, and, and they seem to have got their tactics right. Could you explain to me maybe what's going on out there in tactic-wise? I think, um, you know, like I said, Air had the game plan. They came in, set the stall out, and um, they, uh, you know, they just came in defend. You know, not like they normally do on the road. Gage will take all the pressure, and they'll they'll score on the breaks, which they have done. And uh, you know, you saw Belfast. They kind of picked the tempo at the last, you know, five or ten minutes, and now we're uh, on the back foot a little bit. But you know, every time they got under pressure, they had nothing. They just iced the puck, killed the play, and uh, you know, regain their composure. And the Giants really need to do something. There they are coming out. They have a little bit left at their power play, which I should maybe explain for people who don't know is when you have a, a one-man advantage. So they have a little bit of time here uh, with an extra man. Yeah, that's. Uh, I think it's key. They've, they've got to, uh, you know, they really have to try and score on this, the back end of this power play, get their foot back on the door. Um, you know, air, air with the two goal lead is going to be tough. Okay, thanks very much, Ashley and PC. Let's go over to the Odyssey, the second period, with uh, Alex Dampier and Simon Cross. Anyone who watched ice hockey in Salt Lake City will know that this is a sport full of surprises, and a 2 0 first period scoreline certainly a surprise. Here's the first goal, an error by Bales, Alex. Yeah, you know, he, he got behind the net and he really should have rimmed it around the glass and he tried to shortcut it over to Ruff. Here's the second one, bad man coverage. You know, Kellum got caught out, Barron's came back a little slow and Eddie Courtney just, you know, he puts it upstairs better than most guys can. You can't give him that much room. Nice save by Ed Courtney. Rick Gordon with the first goal, Ed Courtney with the second. It's 2-0 for air as Barron's and Byron get ready to face off for the second of the three periods. Just a little bit of work on the mask of Barron from our referee Kirkham. Line changes are a key here, Simon, because it's a long way for the defense to get back to their home bench. If you leave too early, our Belfast will uh, hit you on a breakaway. Barron's is ready. Second period is so important. The next goal in this game, very important. It either brings Giants right back into it or opens a rather daunting three-goal lead for the Eagles. Well, right now they've got an opportunity. 22 seconds left in this power play. They need something to happen. And they shoot that one around the backboards and fight for it in the corners. Just 10 seconds remaining on the one player advantage for Belfast. So they to get in a couple of shots here. Perhaps a shot. Oh, Rail was stopped by Gage. Here's Scottish Eagles. Well, 
Quite an opportunity for Belfast. Well, there's the guy that can save him right there. Bales, he or uh, he Gage comes up with a huge save. So both teams now playing with five players. Shot. Just past the post from Sean Behrens. Behrens will try and wheel back and get it, but it goes past Hill. Go to the bench, leave it for his defence to lap that one. It's Chad Allen. First year at the Giants. He gets that one forward. Dave Matsoff, another newcomer to the Belfast squad this season. Johnson shoots. Kicked away by fucking Gage. Johnson. Hasn't scored all season, Johnson, so it would have been a nice time to open his account. Yeah, right now are under pressure, sign. They're just shooting that puck anywhere. They've got to settle down. That's not the way to play. Bill Crow gets that one out. A break on here, though, is Dodie Woods forward. And he takes the puck into the zone, and his teammates skate forward too quickly. Offside call on Bristol, I think. Yeah, those are a good, a good break up ice. Right here, here they are. They've thrown the puck around, and they got, and all of a sudden they get this quick transition up ice. Unfortunately, they went offside on it. It was a good scoring chance. Howden Jickling. Waved away. Ward and Courtney will take this face off. Courtney just touches it back. Rizador shoots it around the boards. Here's Captain Jeff Ho. Ward. Gage makes that touch off. Ward's a player I like very much, Alex. A player who just seems to do every job, not, not perhaps spectacularly, but just every job well. Well, you know, he just made the job very easy for his defense partner there. He stepped out, stopped it. They're able to clear the zone. Otherwise, his, his defenseman could have been run, puck turned over. They're right now are content. They want to keep this game slowed down. They don't want to give uh, Belfast a chance to get any kind of flow going whatsoever. Both teams will have plenty of legs in them, though, because the, the first period was not played at a great place. Again, face-offs, very important here right now. Ward and Courtney will take it. It's back, a shooting opportunity. Gage spills it. Uh, get it away. Courtney. Molan, back to Courtney. Courtney tried to get it back quickly to Jickling, but it's cut out by Stevens. Here comes Stevens, he falls down. No call by referee Curtin. Onside is a shot. Gage makes a save. Hode wheels around. Brown Gage just touches that one up and he decides to make the grab and take the face off as Stevens was coming in close. That's the second or third time Air just unloaded that puck into the middle of the rink. They can't do that. They've got to put it up the walls, otherwise they're going to get scored against. Belfast is too solid up the middle. They'll take every chance they get. Gage made eight saves in the first period. And Bales was the busier netminder. Beaten twice on 12 shots. Behrens. Taken away from him though. This is Rhett Gordon, the scorer of the first goal coming forward. Sean Byram over the glass into the crowd that was a good breakout they had going there and uh you know they're so quick that to get that transition going belfast have to be really careful the defense don't pinch up too hard they're they're used to doing that chad allen's one of their steady defense and byram he's been playing very well been at air since 1997 former bracknell and manchester man sean byram one of the mainstays of the british league for years Weaver, his flip forward. 
Gathered though by Chad Allen. Good signing from Dave Whistle in the summer. A lot of clubs wanted Chad Allen in their lineup. Whistle got him. Allen, nice pass forward from him. And finds Berens. Berens shoots in. No little touch there from Rails. The Gage was able to get it away. They need the big line, don't they? They need the line of Rail and Ruff and Berens to really click in this second period. Stewart. Down to Allen. Balba. Air again, are just quite content just to put the puck up the wall, get it deep, keep the flow going, try to keep Belfast out of the game. Belfast have had a few chances up the middle. They're trying to split the uh, air defense. Air's really going to have to tighten up, make sure they don't give away the middle of the rink. So a face-off in the neutral zone. Balba, it's a Lithuanian. Rizador. Taran Sandwich. Announced before the games, here is a Taran the Terror. Nickname he doesn't like very much. He says he's, he's no terror. Quite a softy at heart. Fine, solid defenseman though. Played in the NHL. Now the Giants. Here's Sandwich. Sandwich comes forward. Can't find the final pass. And air come forward over the bar, off the glass, and back around to Herbers. And a break on chance here. Schulte had little support though, and he slowed up. Wasn't sure where to go. Hode goes to ground. And Bowen just shoots that one behind the goal, allows the line change. That group skate off, replaced by another. <laughs> Wood, Molingo's flying. Hillstrom comes in to keep it in there. Wood again, and Bowen this time. Well, Wood's the agitator. Taking a couple of slaps there from Bowen. Well, you know, Molina just drawn a penalty and error going on a power play. Here it is here. Little pushing, little shoving. Molina gets hauled down. Automatic penalty, and then Woods gets uh, drawn into it. He may get uh, coincidentals on this one. We'll see what happens. I think uh, I think Error lit up with the power play still. Wiss certainly doesn't look happy on this. Hard to say, Bowen got a few shots in on uh, on uh, Doty. I'm you surprised know? that uh, Doty would perhaps didn't get more involved there because uh, Bowen made a couple of uh, impressions on the nose of Wood. Well, right now, I think uh, Doty was. He's the most important thing right now. He's keeping uh, the power play, and that's what they want. So there's uh, two plus two coming up on Belfast. So you're right, there will be a power play to air. And we have a one-player advantage for the Eagles. It's loose in front of the net. Bales has to be sharp there. So what's happened here is that uh, we've got a two-minute advantage. We've got three men in the penalty box at the moment. Two in from Belfast, one in from air. So the two-minute extra man advantage goes to the Eagles. Bales will be under pressure. Well, here right now, they're going to work around. They're looking for a shot of any kind. They're going to stack the net, try to take away the sight line. And really, you know, they they're, probably won't be anything fancy. Well, skating in. Rizador. Can't find the opening for the shot. Bales has to watch out. Boy, Air had some good chances there. They could have put another number three in. Well, Rick Gordon has some wide open net. 
Paul Bell got to go across quickly to not have the chance. Here's Byram. Got Weaver behind him. Homegrown talent, Jonathan Weaver. Lays that one back. Here's Byram again. Bales. It's loose but cleared by Belfast. It's exactly what you want as a goalie. If you give up the rebound, you want one of your own shirts there to clear the loose puck in front of the net. Right now, Air just putting everything on net and they're just hoping to get rebounds. Seven minutes played in this second period. Gordon and Courtney in the first period. Short hand, Hickens, Matsoff shoots. Gage turns it away. Yep. 30 seconds remaining on the power play for air. Giants doing a good job at the moment of killing this, though. Just eating up those seconds. But here's Ed Courtney, winds, bails, slams his legs together to make the save. The only chance Eddie Courtney gets to shoot right here, he shoots. He's got two guys going to the net hard. Their players know when Eddie gets the puck, he's going to the net with it. The air team just drives the net home for rebounds. Ed Courtney's a player that you coach. I guess he's a, he's a coach's dream because he always puts the puck away. Well, some nights he is. <laughs> he has those lapses, but yeah, Eddie's, Eddie's a good player. Once had a 70-goal season in the British game. Not a bad return. No, when Eddie first came to us in uh, Sheffield, he uh, he added a great deal of scoring punch, and uh, he was certainly a welcome addition in our lineup. 34 years old now. Played in the National Hockey League with the San Jose Sharks. Actually had a very good season with the Sharks. Scoring 20 points. The since then made his career in Great Britain with Sheffield Steelers and now in his second season with the Eagles scored the second goal, the, the vital second they're still on the power play, Bales makes a save he's really being kept busy he's making far more saves than his opposite number but Oak Gage has had to be on his toes in this second period and Bales came up with a big save there that could have quite easily been the third goal he's, uh, he's had to come up big right here Right out of nothing, but he was ready for it. Cleaned up his own rebound, which is important. There's always, air always that guy's camped out in the doorstep. Both teams playing with five men now. The penalties are over. And a wrap around. Bale makes a save first time, but he can't make the second stop. Well, straight back to full strength. The Giants can see the goal. It was the young Brit, Jonathan Weaver, who skates in to make the final touch. And yeah. the only homegrown talent on Bring the ice. the face off. He goes around behind the net, wrap around. Air the crash air the net. Yes. It's good play right there. You know, they're big and strong. They take advantage of their size. Bales makes the save. Just couldn't control. Weaver skates in. Whistle won't be happy with the... Uh, the uh, player coverage there. Weaver had too much time to walk in. Great play right there. That was, that was good hard work when airs count. Well, now the Giants really have some work to do. This crowd has really got to lift their side because no one in their wildest imagination would imagine a 3 nothing lead to the Eagles. You know, hockey's funny that way, Simon. One goal right now, the crowd gets lifted, and things happen. In eight meetings in league play this year, Belfast won seven. Whereas Dave Bristol's side had won that tie. Whistle now issuing the instructions to try and make sure that his team don't suffer the first defeat of the year to the Eagles. Well, the Eagles right now, you know, you can throw the form book out the window. They get a chance. What they've got to do, they don't have to worry about making it four. Just keep playing solid defensive hockey. Make sure they don't get caught out. Belfast Giants, the dominant side in British ice hockey this season. 
They won the league with six weeks to spare. Their first championship in just their second season. But at the moment, struggling to make it a cup double. He's played nearly half his match. It's Matsos. Important middle touch forward to Bowen. Shot. Just past the right hand post of Gage. You shouldn't underestimate the work that Gage has done in the net for air because in the early part of this spell, it has to be very sharp. Well, right here is a pass back, quick shot. You know, he's got to be alert. He hasn't had a lot of work to do, and that's often tough for a goaltender. A lot of goalies like to be busy. He's been standing around a bit. He has to be ready, though, because there, you know, if they have a lapse or two, Giants come in with some quality chances. But he's been the big, the big player for air tonight. He's made the big saves when they needed them. Belfast definitely need this crowd into the game right now. They need to get them off their seats somehow. Cleared by Air Johnson keeps it in. Now a chance for Alan Schuler to get forward. It's Courtney. Courtney still. And a jickling. Past the post. Jickling again to Moline. Deadline day signing. Great skater, finally starting to produce in terms of goals and assists. But a real nuisance. Here come Belfast, it's Johnson. Formerly at the London Knights, also with the Bracknell Bees. Johnson gets that one across, it's cut out before it can reach Colin Ward. Belfast have got their defense jumping into the game an awful lot now, Simon. They do anyway, but they're even more so. They're down three goals. They've got to jump up and take some chances. Rob Stewart coming forward, looking for Kevin Rail. Rail, Berens, and Ruff out there now, but it's the Eagles with possession. And Weaver, the score of the third goal with that shot. Jonathan Weaver, he's a solid player. He's uh, certainly one of the better British kids in the league. And it's great to see the homegrown talent of Jonathan Weaver having such a an impact and be one of the top players in this game. Scoring that third goal. And this is good work by Jason Ruff. Chad Allen. Rail, right at the back, not where the Giants need him. That'll be a face-off, Gage gathers that one. Well, he's quite happy to kill the puck, they're doing well on their draws right now, so, you know, Gage kills it, kills any momentum that uh, the Giants might be trying to build up. But Air have got to be careful with the uh, Giants defense jumping in, they're very offensive. You know, Johnson jumps in there, Stewart jumps in. over eight minutes remaining in the second period. The Giants need a goal. They were just hesitating there, wasn't quite sure whether to come for it. Did eventually. Away by the team currently leading by three goals to nil. Matsos, Curtis Bowen. Oh, it's a breakout opportunity here for Air. Wood inside. Bales makes an important stop. Penalty coming up on the Eagles. It's Jeff Hode.
Well, Hode wanted the uh, play to carry on there, but the line change was sloppy by Belfast. Whatever, they'll get the power play advantage. Here's the opportunity right here, Simon. You know, Air could have closed it down right there. Just didn't get the quality shot they wanted, but they sure drive the net hard. They're all over that goalie. You know, Belfast are jumping into the play. Five guys on the offense, and it either works or they're going to lose another goal here. It'll be 4 nothing pretty quick. And Dodie Wood is off for two minutes for slashing. bit of debate going on about where the base off to be, what's going on. Both teams will regroup. And Dodie Wood, in 106 games for San Jose Sharks in the National Hockey League, scored 18 points, Alex, 471 penalty minutes. Well, he uh, he likes that third column, but you know, in all fairness to him, the guy puts the numbers up. He's a legitimate goal scorer, point getter, and he's also tough. So, you know, between himself and uh, Pax and Schulte, they're very effective players for the role they have. Now here's a great chance for Belfast. And Both teams are very very aggressive on their uh, on their penalty kill. Another 130 remaining on this power play. Six and a half minutes remaining in this second period. Rob Stewart drives that one forward. Around the boards. Giants really do make an impression on this power play, even if they don't score, as long as they can start peppering the net, give Gage some work to do. A chance in front of the net, straight across the face. Johnson unable to get the final touch and then cleared by Eagles. Really, you know, Belfast has got to start shooting the puck. They're trying to make a pretty play and it's just not coming off for them right now. I think they need to get it back and start shooting, that's really where they're very effective. 45 seconds remaining on the one-man advantage. Wood is in the penalty box, in the sin bin. Shot! Nice first save. You know, again, Gage comes up with a big save. A bit of an error right at the blue line. Quick shot, and Gage is ready. It's a real blockbuster of epic proportions. And they're selling out quick. Just shot it over the board. With the reaction save. Gage, who played in the NHL last season with Edmonds Oilers. Very quick transition from the National Hockey League to the ISL. Or the netminder. Well, I think there was a lot of jobs went uh, went missing last year. A lot of guys were unemployed, so, you know, he wanted a place to work. Still 39 seconds remaining on this power play for Belfast. Again, faceoffs are so important here, Simon, particularly, you know, he's trying to kill his clock down. This is Behrens. Rail. Just over the bar, the shot. It's Jeff Hode. Back to Rail. Rizador makes a vital interception for Eagles, who come out. Short-handed. Shot. Wasn't so far away from Sean Byram. No, Sean shoots the puck very well. He got away on them. Chance to go a begging here for Belfast. Chad Allen's long range effort deflected over. And there's another penalty coming up straight away. Just as Air returned to full strength, the penalty is killed. I think Simon Kirkham saw something off the puck. You know, I didn't really see anything there. Looks like he's heading towards air again. The players aren't too sure either, are they? Well, you know, the five minutes left in the second period. Another critical, uh, critical call. Well, it's on Belfast. Sean Behrens is going off. He doesn't, doesn't agree with it. They rarely do, though, do they, the players? But Behrens still remonstrating with Kirkham. He doesn't think that was a fair shout. Holding the stick is the penalty. With 5.12 to go, Belfast having just had the man advantage, now find themselves with just four players on the ice. 
Yeah, that's a frustrating penalty. You know, you just uh, you just have an opportunity and you, and you lose a, you lose a penalty. So, Ayers' chance now. And Barron's an important player in the Belfast side. At least he'll be well rested for two minutes when he comes back out. But here's some pressure. Dodie Wood. And Courtney goes to ground. Puck will be cleared up the ice by Belfast, who won't be looking to doing any scoring in the uh, next one minute and ten seconds. Well, they don't want to get complacent either here, Simon. They've got to make sure that they uh, just stay on top of the game. Wait to get Merrins back out there again. The four minutes remaining in the second period. Just 40 seconds remaining on this power play for air. The Giants just looking to eat it up and play the last three minutes or so of this session equal handed and try and get that goal back. Schuler, Weaver. Score of the third goal. Gets it back from Gordon. Weaver out in front of Byram. That's a vital save by Bales. That was a good play by uh, Jonathan Weaver. He's, he's playing very well. Down to the corner. Quick play out front. Great opportunity by Byram. Just missed it. It's Weaver still. Penalty is ticking down. Bales can't make that stop. And the wraparound charge is finished. Well, Air have scored just as Belfast returned to full strength. You know that Jonathan Weaver made that goal again. And he got the Gordon. Point. Red Gordon with his second of the game. You're right, Weaver was out there and making uh, all a all the play. Yeah, great play. Weaver heads up. Saw the guy down the goal line. But give Gordon his, uh, his juice. He stepped out, made a real good play to the net. To the net. So Weaver and Gordon, a very important partnership, and they've given the Eagles a four-nothing lead. How Belfast need a goal now in the remaining 2.45 of the second period. Here's a chance. Massos stopped by Gage. Kurt Bowen. A deflection. Could have gone anywhere. Went over the bar. In front of the net. Well, there was a moment there for... Belfast to have somebody right on top of Gage to try and finish that one. This matches his effort. Gage made the kick save. You know there hasn't been a lot of pressure, you know, other than the power plays. But when Bell, when uh, Air have had their chances, they certainly take advantage of them. Well, the air crowd is certainly uh, letting themselves be known here now. Very much in the minority, but the supporter of, of Paul Heavey's side making a noise. Dave Whistle looking very concerned on the bench, as well he should be. This team trail by four goals to nil. Two minutes left in the second period. They need to be the next team to score. The only chance they really have lifting the crowd, lifting themselves and getting back in this game. The Eagles won't mind at all, they've done very well in this game. Good for their lead. Israel, top scorer in the league. They need some production from this line. Here's Rupp. Behrens, backhander. Gage away. It's in, but it's not going to count. It won't count. There had already been a whistle on the play, and 
his kick was high anyway. Belfort will argue about it, but it's not going to count whatever happens. Whatever they say. Now here it is right here. Shot to the net. Puck jumps up pretty high. Now it's... That'd be pretty harsh. There's nothing a goalie can do about that. In fact, the face-off should be outside the zone. Well, it did one thing. It got the crowd to their feet. So Gage just popped it up here. And the stick knocks it in from up high. No goal. Again, you know, Air just made a couple fundamental errors and, and let uh, Belfast into the game. They've got to shut it down for this last 124 in the period, make sure they don't give them any kind of an advantage or any kind of scoring chance. So just to clarify, I think the whistle had gone before the high stick put the puck in. in. It was uh, some sort of stick in on gauge, was it, that the referee Kirkham called the play for? I'm not sure what he called it for, but uh, I assume it was for the high stick or the uh, stick on Gage's glove. Same result, no goal, Belfast, but at least some signs for the crowd to get some encouragement from. A minute remaining in the second period. Johnson. They've got to fight for every puck now. Sandwich toward Stevens and Ho try and combine but it's away by air so just 20 seconds remaining on this second session and the Eagles have doubled their lead well right now air just they're fighting hard for every puck they're just trying to get through this period four nothing up you know Unbelievable. You'd never put money on that kind of result right now, Simon. The Eagle fans have watched their side lose seven games to Belfast this season and tied just one. Perhaps significant that that tie came in this building just a week ago. By far, the Eagles' best performance against the Giants this season. Until this one. Five seconds to go in this second period. No time for Belfast to get up the ice, they'll have to shoot it from range. Bowen does so, Gage makes the glove save. And Gage skates off after 40 seconds, unbeaten. He's been outstanding, really. I, uh, you know, I've always respected him as a goaltender, but you know, today is a big game, and uh, he did everything that uh, Ayers asked him to do. Whenever they had the opportunities, he's come up with that save they need. He slows the game up, he freezes the puck, He's doing everything that the, the air defense want him to do. And what about if you're the coach of a team that trails 4 nothing in a winner-takes-all cup final? What do you say? Well, I just about said it right there. You know, I've been in that position a few times, and uh, occasionally we've been lucky and come out with it, but the, the players know what they have to do. It's, you know, right here, it's a wraparound. Weaver skates in. Thank you very much. Puck's loose. Man marking was really bad, but, you know, again... You've got to give Weaver's credit. He's been involved in uh, the last two goals. He's playing extremely well. Here we are here. Weaver again. Shot from the point down to the, to the goal line. Gordon steps out. Yeah, he's just given too much time. The coverage in their own zone. I think, you know, Air pretty well got their coverage right. That was a bit of a cheap shot at the end there. And Gordon brushed off the... Uh clock on the jaw pretty quickly and there you go Belfast Giants nil Air Scottish Eagles four after 40 minutes 20 minutes for Giants to get right back into this game well plenty for the Giants organization to get worried about I wonder what Bob Zeller thinks of it he's down ringside with Denise
Thanks very much. Yes, Bob with me now. I don't know what to say, Bob. We did not expect this. How can they come back from 4 0 down? Oh, sure. We've done it before. We'll do it again. You know, this is a one off game. Both teams are right up for it. Both teams are going flat out. And past records count for nothing in, in a game like this. They came out, they had to jump on us at the beginning. We've been playing a lot better. There's still 20 minutes to go. This is ice hockey, and we can still win it. So you're still optimistic, despite the fact that they are, they've got some superb players playing absolutely 100%. Oh, sure. I'm always optimistic. You know, it's, uh, it's the nature of the game. Uh, sometimes at the end of the second period, you can be down three or four goals. We are. But you watch, our guys will come back, and they'll, they'll give their very best. And usually that's good enough. There was an opportunity missed, perhaps, on the power play there. The Giants were throwing everything at air, still couldn't get it in the net. Should they just, be, they should just shoot the puck all the time? Well, they should, but then if they shoot the puck and waste the shots, then you say, you know, that that's a waste, too. They do what they think is best under the circumstances, and sometimes that's not good enough. Sometimes it is. Byron is exceptional, isn't he, for them? Yeah, he's, he's always exceptional. He's always good against us. That's the, the worst part of it. But all of the air team is a good team. We played a game against him the other night. We were lucky to come away with a 3-3 tie. Okay, let's see what happens. Back to you in the studio, Jerome. Thanks very, Denise. Thanks very much there, Denise. Uh, Bob being positive, but then again, he used to be a journalist, and uh, you know what they're like. Keep your emails coming in to us. The address is ice.hockey at bbc.co.uk. And the quiz question, if you missed it earlier, what number is Geraldine Heaney earlier on this programme, Lurgan's gold medalist at the Winter Olympics? What does she wear on her shirt? What number? The prize is a shirt signed by Geraldine and with her name and number on it as well. And Geraldine will pick the number, or uh, rather pick the winner before the end of this programme at about 25 past five. Uh, we have a few a few emails already and Lisa Reid is Jeff Hode's biggest fan says it doesn't matter if the Giants win or lose today she'll still support them uh, Alex O'Mahony wants to know if there's a Giants supporters club in Dublin might be one in Belfast after today maybe someone else can answer that and Chris Farrington in Cambridge reckons Geraldine Heaney wears the number 19 shirt close but uh, not close enough I'm afraid that's not right but uh, keep working on it and no doubt, of course, uh, the BBC will get the blame here because the Eagles haven't beaten the Giants all season and all of a sudden it's 4-0. Can you guys explain that in, in a sentence or two? Uh, well, we're, we're talking about it. Maybe, uh, maybe Belfast were a little bit tired. Uh, they look a little sluggish Left right now. Left behind last night against yeah, you? Yeah. Um, I mean, you know, surely they, they know the game the next day. They weren't going all out last night. It didn't matter last night. Uh, they're playing differently than they did last night. Yeah, they seem, you know, the, the, like last night they was just constant. They kept coming out as, um, you know, every every chance they had and tonight they seem a little uh, maybe they are sluggish I mean I don't take anything away from air because they've, they've been uh, they've played a perfect game so far but um, I think Belfast has a lot of work to do they're gonna have to dig deep to find something to come back and to be fair to the Eagles there's a lot of their fans watching us and uh, a lot there at the Odyssey as well I mean the players aren't, aren't out yet they are on their way but you can see a lot of Eagles there and getting great support and really their team maybe was affected by all the hype as well and maybe it steeled them for the game when they heard all this about the Giants, the Giants were home, what the Giants were going to do and maybe, they, maybe it made them more determined to come out and, and prove a point. Yeah. Um, they, they came down Belfast with a, with a game plan and they've just followed it to a 2 um, They're They're playing aggressive, they're hitting. Look at that, she's smiling <laughs> but, the, but, but the Giants fans are sitting there stunned. They can't believe it. I know. All they need is a goal to get them going. And like I said, you never know. Uh, chances are slim, but you never know. And all they need after that is a bit of another three. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, just to clarify now, if they get back to four all by some chance, there's the, the, the Eagles coming. Now, if they get back to four all, what happens then? And we'll go into over, sudden death overtime, where uh, I think it'll be 10 minutes, and the first team to score will win. If that's not the case, then uh, it goes down to penalty shots. So. OK, well, the Giants uh, fans will no doubt try and lift them here. We're going to go back uh, for the third and final period just very quickly to give you another uh, Gaelic football full-time. Derry have beaten Sligo. No, they've lost to Sligo. Derry 110, Sligo 14 points. A one-point win for Sligo up at Celtic Park. Derry's fourth defeat in the league so far. Right, OK, back to the Odyssey. Just 20 minutes away from uh, seeing who will get their hands on the Challenge Cup. Describing the action for the last period. Once again, Alex Dampier and Simon Cross. A scoreline going into the third period that not many would have predicted. 4-0 to the Eagles, but put simply, Giants must score early in this third period. The final period, and they've got to get that early goal to have any chance 
of adding the Challenge Cup to their league title. The first five minutes of this period, very important. Yeah, you know, it was eight, 18 shots each, but, uh, you know, that doesn't stand for anything. It's four goals for the Eagles right now. Colin Ward's little boy there, looking on, hoping Daddy can do the business in this final period. But uh, Scottish Eagles, let's not take away from their achievement. I mean, there's a reason they're winning 4-0. They've just played so well. Yeah, they've contained uh, Belfast. They haven't let them get into the game at all. Wood, Matsos, the puck is dropped. And we're underway for the final 20 minutes. Oh, uh, charge penalty right off the bat. Well, that was silly. Straight off the... Uh, the face off. I followed the puck down to the net and Shula gathered the puck down behind the net of Gage. Phil Crow got a penalty straight away, so a chance straight away for Belfast. They'll have a two minute advantage, but Crow was uh, was foolish. Well, he got up against Schulte, and I think he's just trying to get Schulte off his game a little bit. He knows he's a key guy, and uh, he doesn't want to, but you know, right now, that's the last thing Aaron needed, and uh, you know, if, 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 if Belfast are going to get into the game, this will be it right here. This is the chance we're talking about straight away. Just a matter of seconds into the final period. Bill Crow off for two minutes. Power play. Rail. Rail looks to shoot. Goes instead to his right hand side. Hode flashes one across the face of the net. It's clear by air. This is Kevin Rail. Chad Allen. again picked. Shot from Hode. Loose in front of the net. Man in front of the net was Paxton Schulte. Looking to unsettle Gage, maybe get the big tip save. chance. Big save right there. You know, Paxton's right on the doorstep, ready to pounce on any rebound. Stevens, rough out there now. So I'll mix the lines up on the power play. You'll see different combinations out there trying to work together with the man advantage. Well, right now, Wiss is going to try anything. You know, he, he went to his uh, his best line. They got a couple good chances. Right now, he's got Stevens out there. Curtis Bowen on defense. Curtis a forward and a defenseman, but he'll shoot the puck. He gets a chance. He can rip it. Fifty-six seconds remain on the one-man advantage for Belfast. Bowen, this is Rob Stewart. Shot from out wide. Bowen can't keep it in the zone. It's cleared. Bale now has it behind his own net. Thirty seconds remain on the power play. Stewart again. Rough goes to ground. It's the referee, gets nothing out of Kirkham. And air clear that one, much to the joy of their small but vocal group of fans. Two minutes into the final period, just a few seconds now remaining on this power play for Belfast. Curtis Bowen. It's five on five again. Crow is back for air. And a two-on-two -two breakout chance with Crow rushing to the net. Backhanded drop-off. Bales makes the save. And an air clear the penalty. Yeah, here it is right here. Crow drives the net real hard. He does what he's supposed to do. Tries to screen the goalie. He does that real well. He's a big, strong guy. Mike Bales with some big saves. He's been beaten four times. Haven't perhaps had the coverage he wanted from his defence, although the oh. first goal, I know Alex is being a little bit more sympathetic than I was, but uh, Bale's made a, a, huge, a huge mistake. Well, they've had some quality chances. You know, all the goals they've scored have been, uh, really can't put the blame on Bale's, except the one possibly. 
Bristow's down. Whistle on the plate, there'll be a face-off. Bristow's fine, though. Bristow's been a big, strong player for them. The way the air played that first period, when they came out, they completely controlled the pace of the game. They grabbed those two goals. One of them, perhaps a little fortunate, a very good finish, Courtney. And uh, the way they took over physically. Yeah, that's the big thing for them. They're a big, strong team. They've got to use that to their advantage they have tonight. They've, uh, they've gone down and worked hard in the Belfast defense. And Matsos will chase this one, but there I have it. Back on his own blue line, Kelman. Shoots it in, gathered by Ho. Here's Bristow again. Dodi Wood drops it off. Bristow's in front of the net, the puck is loose, and Bristow's surely sealed it now. Bristow rushing to the net, just as Alex was saying, get to the net, cause some trouble. You see this play, Dodi Wood drops it, Wood just throws it to the net, he drives the net hard, puck comes loose. You know, there's nothing a goalie can do about that. Defense has got to clear that guy out of there. That's a, not a soft goal, but certainly one I think that uh, Belfast would like to have another chance of protecting. Balba and Wood involved. Bristow with a finish. 16.48 remaining in the game. A five goal deficit is a big ask. Well, they've just got to keep battling away. There's nothing else they can do for it. Just keep working, working, hoping something happens. Nearly a tip-in chance there from Kevin Rayo. And the big, strong air defense, very disciplined defense as well, have done a good job in keeping out the league's top scorers in Rayo and Berens. Well, it's not over by a long shot. They're still going to have to do some work. We both, Alex, haven't we seen big comebacks in uh, this sport? Five is a lot, but it can be done. Particularly in a league that's uh, consistently a low-scoring uh, league. You know, they'd have to really collapse right now and let that, uh, let that happen. Allen, it's loose in front of the net. But Sandwith couldn't get the stick on the puck. And perhaps Sandwith, with the greatest respect, was not the man you wanted on the edge of the crease with the loose puck there. Well, right now, Belfast is throwing everybody to the net. Defense forwards, everybody's going hard. If you get a chance to go to the net, they go. I have seen a six-goal final period comeback. I'm not raising any false hopes here, but... The old expression that only takes a second to score a goal, never more relevant than in this sport. Well, right now, Belfast have got to try to get something happening, and they're going to try anything. The players are... Uh, nobody's happy losing at home like this. A lot of pride at stake. You know, Belfast is a good team, you can't take anything away from them, but they have come here with the right game plan and they've got the bounces that they needed. Well, if you're going to play Belfast nine times in one season and just one... I know. Schultz and Woods are going to be going at it here very shortly. We don't often see fights in a cut final, but getting thrown out of a cut final. And these scores like this, quite challenging. And Schulte and Cody Wood having a little bit of a debate between themselves. Well, Paxton right now is in a situation where one more fight, I think he has to sit out again. Well, here's a big hit in the corner. 
They're doing everything they can right now to rumple Ayers' feathers, trying to get them, uh, trying to get them to bite, but Ayers being pretty disciplined. Schulte and Wood take the face off. And it's cleared by air down the ice. The icing, so we'll have another face off. 14 21 remaining. You see right there that uh, Paxton Schulte just went by and gave Phil Crow a bit of a shot. and Matos would like to take the face off but Schulte and Balba come in instead a lot of stoppages here a lot of uh, facing off, squaring off I feel like something could be coming here we're well, trying to get Paxton involved here Phil Crow steps up to him. Box is not going to do anything right now. Well, if Belfast lose a man, it's uh, game over completely, Ooh. really. Box has got his helmet in there. Fierce competitor will be very disappointed with this game. Paxton Schulte. And as Hillstrom brings the puck off the ice. And Weaver battles for it on the boards. Weaver's done so well in this game. Belfast just can't seem to get it together right now. They're uh, really struggling. Rough to Behrens. Well, another mix-up between Allen and Stewart allows Byram to come away. Allen gets back, though. And here's Behrens. He's got Ruff with him and Rail as well. Neither can get a stick on the puck. And Byram forward for air. He's upended. Kirkham won't call anything there. There's Byram driving hard to the net. Kevin Rayel for Belfast. 13 minutes remaining in the game. Air clear again. Ed Courtney. Big hit on the boards. Johnson. Stevens goes down. Tripped by Jickling, but back on his feet. Here's Jickling. Jiffling centers it. Moline. Shane Johnson. Johnson again. Shot from Dodie Wood. Curtis Bowen forward for Belfast Giants. Shane Johnson, former Bracknell Bees, London Knights defenseman, highly regarded. Skates to the bench. And we're going very strange at the moment, Alex. Curtis Bowen. Sulte tries to bring it down. 
11 11 to go Jason Bowen Rough Behrens Behrens again Air just stacking up that neutral zone right now. They're just not letting uh, Belfast come out at all. Chad Allen. Allen sends it to Behrens. Moment there for Belfast to try and break this duck. The gauge is 10-18 away from a shutout in a cup final. Behrens with that chance. Well, this has been a Great performance by Air. They've shut everything down that uh, Belfast could throw at them. And they just keep plugging that neutral zone. And, you know, I don't think you're going to see much different between now and the end of the period. They're not going to be overly offensive. They're just going to take away everything that Belfast tries. Stevens tries one. It's away by Hillstrom, the Swede, the big strong, very solid defenseman. And Courtney loops it away. It's one to chase for Moline. A deadline day purchase for Air Scottish Eagles. Jeff Hode. Here's Sandwich, backhands it to Hode. And we're just over nine minutes remaining in this game. They're just content to keep the puck away from their the goalie gauge and shoot out the ice whenever they can. Well, this is, uh, there's two fairly happy guys right there. Everything they've talked about has gone right for them today. Paul Heavey and Scott Rex, both have tasted success at the top level in the British game. Heavey, uh, born and bred Scott. Here's Wood. Dodie Wood tried Perhaps he should have gone for the shot himself. Well, I think he was looking to set up Phil Crow there. Perhaps could have been a bit more selfish, though. There's Curtis Bowen. Right in front of the net. It's a real scramble going on there, but it's eventually away. And Cam Bristow's forward. Bristow beats his man and shoots. Bale just gets back to make the grab on the line. And there's a bit of a fight in the goal crease. Uh, Jonathan Weaver got in there. Jonathan, he's a pretty honest hockey player, but he's not going to take it either. He's a pretty tough kid. He'll, here's Bristow driving hard to the net. Does a good job right there. First Bale sets his ground. Just about rolled by him. Weaver will come in late looking for the rebound, what he's supposed to do. Gets pushed to the crossbar for his efforts. I think he takes a punch after that. A little better angle here. It looks like it's going to pop free. Bale just gets his hand to it. Jason Bowen. 
in front of the net, a chance for Behrens goes wide. Good opportunity for Behrens. Hellman, rough. Well, last year we had a grand slam for the Sheffield Steelers. In 97-98, Jeff Hodnell, the Belfast Giants, was with the Air Scottish Eagles side that did the Grand Slam, won every trophy going. People were tipping Belfast to do just that this year. They dominated the league so much, but it looks like trophies will be shared this term. Rail past the post. Ed Courtney, the important second goal for the former Sheffield man. Just wide, just kick the post. You know, when you're not getting the bounce, it just doesn't go for you. Belfast have had some chances tonight and haven't buried him. Air got their chances. Eddie Courtney gets a chance, he puts a top shelf. Some nights those happen. And, uh, you know, there's nothing you can do about it. But playoffs coming up. It's very important right now. These guys have got to play each other. Belfast have got to get, got to get that confidence and uh, good feeling back in their dressing room. They've got to have a good third period here. Belfast Giants winning the league by 21 points from air. It's jiffling. Got some help from the bench. I know. Good work by Bauber. Nearly found a way in. Jiffling. Courtney loses the puck. Tipping attempt. Bell fumbles it, but it's Rob Stewart coming away. Poor power third defence by the experienced number 16. And Wood has it back. Giants with the league title. The Cup going to Scotland by the look of things. And as Alex said, the playoffs to come. But I suppose this result will uh, be noticed around the league, Alex, and give everyone a little bit of a jump. Well, I guess it works the other way. It's going to be noticed in the Belfast dressing room. And uh, whoever plays them next, there goes Bristol on a good break. Bristow, he's surrounded, but he gets in the shot. But notice that the Giants can be beaten. With five and a half minutes remaining. The Giants still trying everything to try and get some goals in this game. Here's Schulte. Johnson. Would have cleared it. Right now, they just want to salvage some pride. That's what has to happen for Belfast. They got to get back into the dressing room and a feel good factor. A little bit of pushing and shoving going on. Schulte has been parked out around Gage's crease, doing what he's supposed to do. And Dodi Wood coming in there just to give him a nudge, remind him he's still around. Phil Crow as well. There's some real heavyweights out there. No one's throwing the first punch. Well, right now with playoffs coming up, nobody wants to uh, lose one of their key guys for fighting, so I don't think much is going to happen. Schulte does have to stay calm because he is just a, a game away from an automatic suspension. Well, the Air Scottish Eagle fans are happy. They got a nice ferry ride coming up. It's been worth it for them, though. And even the uh, most loyal of that number could not have expected such a scoreline. I think the bartender might be busy on that boat. <laughs> well, decent celebrations. It's 
Sunderland under the five minutes remaining. With Todd Kelman. Jason Ruff. Kelman shot across the face from Real. Gage watches that one go by as well. Ruff perhaps over elaborating a little bit in front of net there. You know, Ruff gets half a chance he's in. Normally that puck had been on net. He doesn't get the bounce and loses it. So 4.04 remaining now in the third and final period. You know, David right now, he's just looking for uh, some kind of answer here just to get a goal. One goal right now and just try to get that feel-good factor again. Courtney. In that first period, recapping the scoring, Brett Gordon given a gift by Mike Bells to make it 1-0. A great finish by Ed Courtney, making it 2-0. In the second, the Gordon-Weaver line and the partnership between those two accounted for both goals and a 4-0 lead. Loose in front of the net. Cam Bristow scoring the fifth, the vital fifth, the uh, game-killing fifth in this third period. Allen. Johnson misses it, it's picked up by Curtis Bowen. Sandwich. And Brett Gordon gets it in. Sandwich tries to cut it out. The stoppage. Good travelling support from Scotland to see the Eagles in this game. Very much, of course, outnumbered by the mass ranks of Giants fans in this sold-out game. And there's no doubt which ones are the happy punters. So just under two minutes remaining. Gage going for the shutout. Giants trying to save some face. But the cut very much going to Scotland for the second time. It's been in Sheffield for the last three years. A shock result. Belfast could never have expected this, and the, the fans, the fans look like they're shocked. The last gasp effort there from Berens. He manages to clip the puck off the boards again, but it's a chance to clear. Who would have thought five nothing? No, you know, right now, 
Belfast are probably just wondering what they got to do. It's going to be a real tough job for Wiss getting them back in the dressing room. This rail chasing it down. 40 seconds remaining. 40 seconds from the cup going to the air Scottish Eagles. Well, nobody's left the building. Everybody's still here. And even the Giants fans on their feet now, which is good to see. Some positive Giants fans cheering on their side, looking for that last, last goal. Just a safe face, really. Ten seconds remaining. The puck is cleared. The air players already starting to celebrate. Five, four, three, two, one. The air players leave the bench. Gage, Mr. Shirt, Paul Heavey, the Air Scottish Eagles coach, can now relax and sit back and watch his team celebrate an amazing 5 0 win. Yeah, you know, before we started this game, we talked about air keeping it tight. Well, every chance they got, they scored. You know, that's certainly a way to put pressure back on Belfast. And uh, going into playoffs, I don't think Coach Whistle's really happy to get that kind of result. He's just going to have to get the guys together this week in practice and uh, try to sort things out. That second line of Weaver, Byron and Gordon, so effective for air. And Ed Courtney, when he got the chance, took it. Some uh, great individual performances from the Eagles. Yeah, I thought Weaver had a great game, so did Gordon. Played well together, created some goals when they needed. And defensively, they were very solid. And their goalie, of course. You don't get too many shutouts in this game, and to get one in the cup final, what a great honor for Joaquin Gage. Yeah, he had some work to do. There wasn't, uh, wasn't a given all night long. He had to come up with some big saves. And, but that's what he's there for. He's, he's really the guy that uh, I think all year has really kept him in the, in, the, uh, in, the, in the hunt. A big disappointment then for Belfast Giants, who have done so much, taken such huge steps, such giant steps, I suppose we should say, in the two years they've been here. They've won the league title. Well, uh, the cup eludes them. Well, they're champions, and they're champions for a reason. They'll uh, they'll regroup. They'll be ready for next week's playoff round. They're not going to lay down and die. There's still a whole new season to play here right now, and I'm sure they're going to be ready for it. The first goal off the bell giveaway to Yeah, Rick Gage Gordon. right here. You know, he just misfired it. You know, the first lucky break of the night for Aaron, the first bad bounce for them. Right here again, Eddie Courtney, ever the opportunist, great goal but Belfast just caught napping there and uh, you can't give them that chance a goal right here Weaver comes through not marked basically a lot of the goals have come from just guys getting away and not not picking up their man you know it's easy to say after the fact but another play right here Weaver passes down to the goal line walks out I think these are things that uh, Dave Whistle is going to uh, certainly address before playoffs Net drive, they were doing that all night long. They were just driving that net as hard as they could. There's nothing a goalie could do. He's just uh, outnumbered big guys going to the crease. Five to nil. Air Scottish Eagles beat the Belfast Giants. Let's return to ringside with Denise. Yes, Geraldine's here with me, having watched the game. It's a one-sided result, but not quite a one-sided game. No, I don't think so. I mean, um, it's unfortunate it wasn't a closer game of the goaltending of the Eagles. They played really well, and, you know, uh, the Eagles were on their game today, and the Giants just didn't really, you know, they didn't come out all that strong, And but it was, it was an exciting game, and I think it was very entertaining for the fans. Do you think the Giants left too many gaps in their defense at times? Pardon? I... Do you think the Giants left too many gaps in their defense? Oh, uh, yeah, for sure. I think so. I mean, they, they couldn't get really out of their own zone. They played a lot in their own end, and... You know, they just didn't seem to have it together so much today. But, you know, it was still a great game, and you got to give both teams credit for a great final. Okay, just one thing, Geraldine. Choose a number between 100 and 150 for us. 91. 91 is the magic number. Well, the trophy is being placed at centre ice, shortly to be lifted by the air... Scottish Eagles. The second time they've won the trophy, they won it, Alex, back in 97 to 98 season. There it is there. And then it became the property of the Sheffield Steelers for three years. Yeah, we, uh, you know, Air, we've seen Air take a lot of uh, silverware in this league. They've been, it's been a bit of a dry spell for them recently, but 
This is certainly a step in the right direction for Coach Heavey and his squad. And Geraldine Heaney being brought out on the carpet. She'll be part of the presentation ceremony. And they look at a rather dejected bunch. Well, I think that's pretty well deserved, Simon. Although I certainly wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't have voted against Gage. So Rhett Gordon gets the man of the match. I'm quite surprised at that. I would have said that uh, a goalie getting a shutout in a final deserves the man of the match. Gordon was good, but uh, Gage was better. Yeah, I think he gave him an opportunity. Gordon played well. Weaver played well with him. That was a solid line. Good to see the British player, Jonathan Weaver, being such an impact on this game. Have to look at Gage with his helmet off. Gage played in the National Hockey League last season with the Edmonton Oilers. Played a total of 23 NHL games. Six foot two, he's a big goalie, covers a lot of net. And he just couldn't be beaten by Belfast. Who really didn't get great production out of their top line. I was hoping for more from the Barons rough rail combination. Yeah, they're the, they're the, uh, the Lions done it for them, but unfortunately they just couldn't get into a flow tonight. Air did a great job in shutting them down, and uh, you know, you just, can't, you just can't get it going every night. There's Jonathan Weaver, part of Sunderland, as the runners-up medals are awarded to the Belfast Giants. The fans here have seen one big presentation ceremony in this building before. The league championship trophy awarded to the Giants just a couple of weeks back. They won it with six weeks to spare. They blew away the rest of the league in the second half. But unable to do the double. Here's Rob Stewart, who's a part of the Belfast lineup in their two years of existence. Big cheers go up for one of the most popular forwards, Sean Behrens. Throws some great touches, but Behrens unable to get through. And Curtis Bowen picks up his runners up award. And you're right, Alex, making the point that so many people stay behind to watch this. The people here just love their hockey. Yeah. It's very much, uh, you know, the crowd of, uh, as much as they've lost, they don't like it. They're still uh, good sports fans, and they're here to appreciate uh, air for what they've done. Huge cheer went up for Paxton and Schulte. Jason Bowen also a very popular figure. Paxton and Schulte has got some work to do ahead of him. Didn't get involved. Uh, he was provoked him to fight several times but never drops his gloves. No, he had to stay on the ice tonight. He uh, He's a key guy. He scored 20 goals, 10 on the power play. If they were going to recover, Paxton uh, had to be involved. Big cheer goes up around the arena for the man who brought this side up from nothing. Dave Whistle, the uh, Belfast Giants coach, coming onto the ice to pick up his award. Uh, Whistle's done a good job. He'll be very disappointed right now, but He'll pick them up, there's no question, this week it's going to be a real tough job for them and he's going to, uh, he'll put them to work. One of the nicest men in the game, the players love playing for Dave Whistle, a real player's coach. And uh, title winner at both Bracknell Beef and at the Belfast Giants. The Air Scottish Eagles players now receive the cheers of their travelling support. Ryan Rizidor was an important part of their strong defence. The reason there was a big zero up on the scoreboard. Cam Bristow, the score of the fifth goal, the killer goal, really. Well, this is certainly going to do their confidence some good. You know, they'll be tough in the playoffs. Mike Jickling, big scorer at university level. It's Dodie Wood who was uh, always a big physical presence on the ice. Jonathan Weaver had such a good game. Great Britain international. 
and the former Manchester Storm player, also played in North America, one of the few British products to play in the top minor leagues of North America, and Weaver really played well this afternoon. Ed Courtney scored that second goal, a player that you've coached, Phil Crow. Phil Crow involved a little bit more than I thought it would be, got plenty of ice time. And Rick Gordon also got the man of the match in this game. Here's oh, the goalie. There's the guy. The 28-year-old Gage, the match winner for Air this afternoon. Well, it's nice to see it means so much to him. You know, played in the NHL last year, still got a big grin on his face. He made some very important saves. I, I think back particularly to the start of the second period, when it was still just a 2-0 game and Belfast had that five minutes where they started to throw things forward, started to get a few chances, but Gage stood firm. Yeah, he, he came up with some big saves when he had to, you know, he, without, a, without a good goal, you're in trouble coming into playoffs or any playoff big game like this, you've got to get your goaltender to keep you in it, and he did, you know, he made the saves when they had to happen. Now, Aaron Schuller, the skipper, skates forward and he'll receive the trophy from Canada's women's national squad member and gold winner from Salt Lake City, Geraldine Heaney. And that Challenge Cup trophy for the second time in the hands of a captain of the Air Scottish Eagles, Alan Schuller. Well, you know, the Giants fans are cheering as hard as anybody. It's nice to see there's... Uh a great deal of sportsmanship here in this arena. They can't get the trophy away from the captain. He's got to start handing it around his teammates, I think. The dejected Giants leave the ice as the Eagles continue to celebrate. Well, the Eagles celebrate at the Odyssey. Welcome back to the Grandstand Studio. You've been watching the Challenge Cup Final live on BBC Northern Ireland and on BBC Two Digital across the UK. The presentation taking place there, and uh, I'm sure the viewers in Scotland enjoyed that. You can email the programme right now, the address ice.hockey at bbc.co.uk with your thoughts on the game. We're on until 25 past five. And by the way, the competition winner of a giant shirt with Geraldine Heaney's number and name on it well, it is Emma Adams from Tanrugi in County Armagh. And well, isn't that where Geraldine came from originally? And the number of her house is number 90, almost 91. The winner there, number 91, uh, 91st email to come in from Emma Adams. Well, the quiz is finished, but we do have super bikes. We have athletics from Vienna and wheelchair basketball. But right now, PC Drone and Ashley Date, my friends from the Nottingham Panthers, as I say, are here to offer some solace to the Giants fans, the poor Giants fans, depressed, shocked, stunned by that. What can you say to them? Um, not to worry, because they still have a good team. Uh, they won the league. Uh, they just not to worry? They lost 5-0 <laughs> at home in the Challenge Cup <laughs> final. They were expected to win. They, they, they picked a bad day to, to have a poor performance. Probably their worst performance of the season, but you know it, it happens It's sports. Yeah, actually, I've just been uh, looking through their results here now. 60 games this season so far, and that's only the second time that they have failed to score. That's that's just the way sport is. I'm afraid it's um, you know what can you do? It, everything went you know perfectly for her today. Fortunately, Belfast you know couldn't come up with uh, couldn't come up with any goals. Couldn't you know they really didn't have any answers. Amazing though. I mean, uh, we need some answers here. What do you think? Was it down to playing last night? Was it really having to play you guys last night? Were they tired? Were they overconfident? What do you think? Well, to be honest, I, I didn't think they they would be affected from last night's performance, but they, they must have been because they didn't have the, the same jump that they did against us last night. They weren't skating as, uh, as fast or uh, jumping on pucks um, as easily. 
Um, but you, they, they did have a pretty bad start. Um, they let a couple of goals in, and they never really recovered from. Uh, they never really recovered from uh, that first period. Okay, let's go and hear from some of the winners, some of the egos. Uh, they are with Denise back at the Odyssey. Yes, I've uh, I've just managed to get I've managed to get the winning captain Alan Taylor and our goal scorer Ed Courtney here. Very very happy. Your fans are absolutely delighted. You've done this year what you couldn't do last year. Yeah, it's obviously a great result for us and. Uh, for so many fans that came across, uh, made the effort to get here, it's, it's fantastic, yeah. Your game plan worked right from the start. It did, yeah. We've obviously had a few problems playing Belfast this year, but uh, it doesn't really matter now. On the big game, we came through, and uh, we're very happy about it. There was much more expectation on their shoulders. Do you feel that helped, and you were just able to go out, relax, and play your own game? Yeah, definitely. We we knew the scenario was pretty good for us. I mean, we're coming in. There's a lot of pressure on them. They played last night. Uh, we we're ready to go and had really nothing to lose. So, is this payback for the Super League? Well, possibly. Yeah, it's a it's a good chunk towards it. But we we've got some more games to play yet this year, and uh, hopefully we'll uh, continue doing this. But this year, having not beaten Belfast at all in eight occasions, to do this today must mean so much to you. It's yeah, it's awesome. We're uh, ecstatic. I'll just bring in Ed Courtney, scorer of the second goal. Ed, uh, a very, very good personal performance from yourself today. Well, uh, it was a game, you know, a team game, 17 guys. And like Alan said, you know, well, we knew, uh, you know, we had a half decent chance, not thinking about the other eight games, but, you know, they were a little tired, I think, from last night. And we, you know, we scored two quick ones right away. And uh, we took advantage of that. And, and like, like you have said, we, we, we stuck to our game plan. And finally, to have some silverware. Yeah, uh, you know, not taking nothing away from Belfast. They deserve the, you know, first place. They're the best team in the league by far. But, uh, you know, after losing it last year against Sheffield in a close game, it's uh, pretty satisfying this year. Okay, thanks very much. You two are going to go and celebrate, I'm sure, tonight. Thank you. Okay, go back to the studio with you now, Jerome. Thanks, Denise. Well, we're still trying to find reasons why the Giants lost. Uh, the latest one is we're going to blame it on the black jersey. They don't usually wear black. No, they don't. I think uh, I don't know if they'll be wearing black again this year either. I think they'll be holding a big bonfire in the car park with those tonight. Absolutely. Okay. What about uh, from here on? And now the treble is gone. Um, you know, they, uh, the Giants won the Super League. Now they've missed out in the Challenge Cup, but the playoffs are still to come, and that's still big competition. That's the third one. Can they bounce back from that? I know they're playing you, you next week. Uh, no doubt. Um, they're professionals. They'll uh, they'll regroup and have a good week in practice and. Uh, just forget about it and move on. And You're try. saying, actually, it might be a wake-up call for them? Yeah, which is, you know, maybe a little unfortunate for the rest of the league that, uh, you know, maybe they became a little bit complacent. I don't know, they, they won the league with, you know, a few weeks to spare. You know, maybe they weren't, um, you know, practice maybe wasn't as sharp as it, you know, probably normally would be. Um, and now, you know, they'll probably get tomorrow off and then they'll come back in Tuesday and they'll be, uh, you know, the focus is the playoffs and it's a whole new season now, so... Absolutely. OK, well, thanks very much for that. We move on from ice hockey now for more of the European Indoor Athletic Championships from Vienna.